What's up YouTube? With the release of Adobe Illustrator on the iPad last week, you might be wondering what is the best vector editor on the iPad? Is it Adobe Illustrator or is it Affinity Designer? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Like I said, Adobe Illustrator has now been out for just over a week on the iPad, and last week I did my reaction video showing you what Adobe Illustrator was like as I went through it for the first time. And you might have been surprised by how impressed I was with Adobe Illustrator considering the really scathing review of Photoshop that I had done just shortly before that. So this week I decided I wanted to test out Adobe Illustrator and Affinity Designer to see which one was the best on iPad. So just like I did with Photoshop and Affinity Photo, I decided to do the same task in both applications. And this is not a test to test out every feature and see how each feature stacks up against each other. This is really a test of basic vector design capabilities just to see what could be done. So I decided I would make an icon of a sugar skull for the Day of the Dead since that holiday is coming up. And essentially what I wanted to do was test out can this thing handle using shapes, using the pen tool, adding color? What kinds of capabilities do each of these have for the basic needs that a designer might have? I didn't go into every tool. I didn't go into every panel. I was just trying to compare them on this very basic level. So I'll go ahead, I'll play the time lapse for you. But before I do, I just want to tell you what I thought. I was very impressed with both of these applications. Now, of course, I knew Affinity Designer much better, having only used Adobe Illustrator a couple of times before this on the iPad. But I do know Adobe Illustrator on the desktop very well. So I was well aware of what its capabilities were on desktop and trying to see what they were on iPad, I was very impressed, just like I was last week. Really, the only reason it took me longer to do the sugar school in Adobe Illustrator was because I wasn't as familiar with it and I did it in Adobe Illustrator first. So a lot of things I figured out about my design in Adobe Illustrator while I was doing it the first time, I didn't have to figure out again in Affinity Designer. So the good news is the state of vector design on the iPad is very good. These two applications are very close in terms of what they can do for the basic designer. Affinity Designer is more advanced. Its iPad version has been out for a lot longer. And I will say this, I really like the gesture controls on Affinity Designer more. Now, I'm used to them, and so that might be part of it, but the fact that I can do gesture controls anywhere on the screen with Affinity Designer is super helpful. Not having to use that little control button, which is what you have in Adobe Illustrator. You always have to go down to that control button in order to do things like keep proportions or resize from the middle. It's just a little bit of an extra hassle to have to use that button rather than doing it anywhere on screen, and so I just find that a lot easier, and I wish Adobe had just copied that over. One of the other things that I just found helpful in terms of speed in Affinity Designer was the number of shapes that it has. For some reason, Adobe Illustrator has always really kept it to the very basic shapes. A rectangle, an ellipse, polygon, and a star. And that's like it. And that's what they have here. So it's not different from the desktop. It's just they could provide more. So when I was trying to do the nose for the skull, that's a heart shape. So I just needed to make a heart shape. And in Affinity Designer, I could just choose the heart shape and have it done super quickly. A heart's a basic shape. But in Adobe Illustrator, I just have to make a heart shape out of triangles and circles or with the pen tool. And that just takes more time. And also with the shape thing, I want to use stars for the eye, but I didn't want the basic star. Now in Adobe Illustrator, as I mentioned last week, the basic five pointed star was the only star available. There was no way to change the points or the radius on it. Whereas the star in Affinity Designer is much more full featured. And so I didn't think that the star would be a big deal last week when I was talking about Adobe Illustrator, and I still don't think it's like a killer deal. But it just turned out that like a lot of sugar skulls have stars in their eyes, and that was what I was going for based on my reference material. And so it was just easier to do that, and it looked better in Affinity Designer just based on what it had available in terms of shapes. The last thing that really stood out about Affinity Designer was the easy ability to do clipping masks. So you'll see that as I'm trying to place, like there's a flower decoration on the top of the skull. In Adobe Illustrator, I have a lot of difficulty doing that because there's no easy clipping mask. It seemed kind of buggy. When I made the clipping mask, it created a clipping group, which I then couldn't undo and couldn't get into to deal with. Now that might have just been me not understanding the program very well. I'm not sure, but I couldn't get the easy clipping mask. And so I had to kind of work around it. Whereas in Infinity Designer, clipping masks are super easy and they're non-destructive. So you just drag it down inside of the other object and it clips it to it. It doesn't make the other object disappear. The other object still stays, it just stays clipped inside it. And it's just a super convenient way to do clipping masks and it just speeds up the workflow, right? So that might be another reason that it was a little bit faster on Affinity Designer. 
On the flip side, Adobe Illustrator definitely has a couple of benefits. And the one that really stood out to me this time was non-destructive shape merging. When you merge shapes now in Adobe Illustrator, and this is new, it's non-destructive merge unless you specifically tell it to do a destructive merge. And so when I was working on the cheekbones on the skull, I could just kind of reposition those. I wasn't quite sure where I wanted them. And so I could reposition those without having to go back to my original shape and redo the merge and then go back and redo it again. And it was just a lot simpler to be able to adjust those on the fly. A fitting designer does not have this ability unless I'm wrong. I couldn't figure out how to make it a non-destructive merge on a fitting designer. I just had to merge it and then redo it. It didn't take me as long because I already had developed it in Illustrator. So I already kind of knew where I wanted the cheekbones, but it sure would be nice to have that feature in Affinity Designer. Kind of on the same theme there, like we talked about last week, Adobe Illustrator has the Shape Builder tool built into it. When I made my video on five things that I wish Affinity Designer had, the Shape Builder was right on top of my list. And so it's just way convenient to have that Shape Builder tool built into Adobe Illustrator on iPad. Of course, Boolean operations can do basically everything Shape Builder can do, but it, the Shape Builder tool is just more convenient and easier to use. So I'll go ahead, play through that time lapse for you. You can go ahead and watch it, see what you think, and then I'll be back to give my recommendations.
watching that time lapse was helpful for you. Of course, I was doing this pretty fast, and these are not the greatest examples of sugar skull icons in the world, but the idea was just to test out the capability of these programs. So here's my recommendation for you. If you're a Creative Cloud subscriber, at this point, if you haven't already bought a Fane Designer on iPad, there really isn't a reason to. You're already paying for Adobe Illustrator on iPad in your Creative Cloud subscription. And so you should probably just keep using Adobe Illustrator. If you're not a Creative Cloud subscriber, Adobe Illustrator on iPad is not a reason to get a Creative Cloud subscription. It is not better than Affinity Designer. In some ways it's worse because it's not as developed. And Affinity Designer is 20 bucks and will get you all of the vector design tools that you need on your iPad. So if you don't already subscribe to the Creative Cloud, there's no reason to do a single subscription for Adobe Illustrator or anything like that because that's going to be, I think, at least $10 a month. In two months, you could have already paid for Affinity Designer. So you might as well go with Affinity Designer. So which of these apps will I be using going forward? Well, you know, Affinity Designer. I really, really like the Affinity Suite and having the ability to make something in Affinity Designer and then if I do need to move to the desktop, be able to work on it in Affinity Publisher where I have all of the tools through Studio Link is just way too convenient for me to give up. So I will be sticking with Affinity Designer as my main vector design tool on the iPad. Now I want to hear from you. Have you used either of these apps? What do you think of them? Have you compared them? And which one do you think you will be using going forward? We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.